These are the topics you can look forward to today. Welcome to the Lucas Nulla booth at Didacta 2025. Let's get started right away. Automation technology. This is our trainer for Industry 4.0. And specifically what is shown here is our car production. This means you can have your own car individually produced from start to finish. Everything is controlled via an ERP system. All individual stations function exactly as they are. Even the painting station paints the vehicle in the color you want. Let's now follow the blue line to the automotive sector. Here we first see the introduction to the basics with Unitrain. In addition to automotive, we also have other systems here, but especially here in the front, we see our training system for ADAS, in this case, the Lane Assist. This means that a real camera together with our e-learning course is used to analyze the road and accordingly keep the vehicle on the road. How exactly it works, what errors can occur and which components are used, you will find out with our Unitrain course. Perfect training in the field of electric vehicles. Specifically for qualifications around the world like DGUV 29093, ASEL3 or the IMI EV, we have developed our three car train. Let's start with our the first responder trainer. Here, it's less about the traditional workshop use, but more about the preparation and skill development for all our emergency services, meaning police, fire brigade and towing companies. These everyday heroes will quickly come into contact with an EV nowadays. And not with an electric vehicle that is in good condition, but one that can be quite damaged. And here it is important to know how I can safely approach this vehicle, recover it and transport it securely. This is how you master EV recovery. By the way, we can also scan the high voltage battery with a thermal imaging camera. Let's move on to our brand new car train, which bears the wonderful name, Diagnose and Maintenance of High Voltage Vehicles. This system will be released in summer 2025 to the market, and what shall I say? It is definitely not an exaggeration to say that this system revolutionizes EV training. We now have a real high voltage system with 400 volts here. And everything we see here are real components that we can directly exchange. This means our entire HV system and these connectors for the air conditioning for the electric motor from the battery to the power electronics, all these connectors can be physically removed and replaced with faulty connectors. This way we can easily integrate insulation, shielding or interlock faults into the system and perform hands-on diagnosis, including the replacement of the faulty component. This is a very important component here. Additionally, I would like to briefly draw attention to this wonderful box here. The high voltage relay box. Now we know. In the automotive world, there is nothing that doesn't exist. This means that each vehicle has its own approach and implementation of the technology to a greater or lesser extent. And of course, there are also different ways of controlling of the high voltage battery or the high voltage system through the relays. Sometimes we have two relays, but we also can have just one or even three relays. To be able to represent this circumstance and simulate different HV system configurations, this relay box can also be exchanged and even used for fault simulation. This allows us to directly simulate faults in the high voltage battery or even in the relay box. Furthermore, we naturally have all the other important components that we need in an electric vehicle. We have our remote key. We have our country specific charging system. We have our low voltage service disconnect and also our cutting loop. All of this works in real, meaning if I cut this here, which we obviously won't do now, the vehicle will be shut down. I would also like to draw special attention to our great display here. This means we now have a complete HMI system here, just as we know it from a real electric vehicle. We are able to represent the different energy flows with this. We see the state of charge of the battery, the speed, we can activate the auxiliary heater or we can turn on the air conditioning. So we see the effect on energy use. We can now also go further into the settings here and for example, choose these different drive systems. This means that everything is included from pure electric vehicles to various hybrid systems and even fuel cell vehicles. And of course, in this system, we also have our diagnostic testers and can activate various faults. Finally, we come to our real HV battery. What can this trainer do? Here we see a real lithium ion battery. And the supreme discipline is, and remains of course, working in the high voltage battery. What is the challenge here? I cannot of course de-energize the high voltage battery itself. 
This means I am always working under live voltage and I'm not able to remove it. This is exactly the case in our training system as well. This means we have a real lithium ion battery with the great advantage that it is secured in such a way that the trainee can neither damage the battery nor can the battery harm the trainee. So from this perspective, it's a clear win-win situation. And here, of course, we also have the wonderful opportunity to introduce various faults into the high voltage battery through our e-learning course. And of course, we can also de-energize the entire system this way. This means that we have a complete integrated diagnostic tester where we can read all the data, control actuators, and also shut down the vehicle in a guided tester-related manner. A special highlight is the little guy down here, our so-called active cell balancer. What is special about this now? Well, we have seen on the camera that this battery is not a single large block, but consists of 16 different cells this means that the overall performance of the battery depends on the performance of each individual cell. So if a cell becomes defective, and that will happen as the cells do not age uniformly but differently, we will naturally reach the point where the cell is damaged and needs to be replaced. We can completely simulate this process with this system. The trainee can therefore read everything through the fault memory. He must locate the cell that is defective. Then he must shut down the entire vehicle, disassemble the high voltage battery, install the new cell into the cell balancer, condition it properly, finally reinstall it into the battery, clear the fault memory, reassemble everything, clear the fault memory, and conduct a test drive. And then the vehicle can be returned to the customer. Artificial intelligence in control engineering, a super exciting topic and a very demanding topic. But here too, Lucas Neuler has managed to package this very complex topic into easily understandable training systems, thus enabling one to explore these complex topics with a lot of fun and ease. Here, for example, we see our pendulum, which as if by magic always remains balanced. So a very complex control technology is at work here. How exactly all of this works with the entire AI control unit and what is inside it, you will learn in our training course and this training system. Another point is our level control in a water treatment plant. This is realized with this very nice and compact Unitrain. Here too, it is about very different types of control systems. We are talking about two point controllers, three point controllers and PID controllers. What else is included in it? How it works? And if you want to delve deeper into this project, then purchase this course and you can fully understand it. Another exciting topic, building system technology. The days when we were simple wire pullers are long gone. Today, everything is smart. Smart building, smart home, AI in your own household, lighting control, assistance, refrigerators that are smart, heating systems that are smart too. We are therefore in a completely new environment and a completely new field of challenges. What has Lucas Nuller developed here? We are focusing here on our smart building. This means we have a communication mix of radio and KNX systems here, which work particularly great in combination. The smart building with our smart energies. This means that here too, energy and building system technology are increasingly merging because suddenly photovoltaics and also the electric vehicle approaches the houses. This means we now have complex topics that overlap and where knowledge must be present when we install or set up. This stuff, which components are we seeing? Here we see our inverter, our power electronics, which is directly connected to our PV system and accordingly converts the energy. With our e-learning course and with the software, we are now able to read out all the data. And what we also have is something really great this device down here, it looks quite inconspicuous. The print on top already gives a little hint about what this is about. In the classroom, we naturally have little influence over the sun, and we probably don't have a large photovoltaic system in the classroom. We have that on the roof, but with this device, we don't need that at all. Here we have a wonderful emulator that virtually brings the sunshine into the classroom, or more the weather in general. This means there are data models installed here that work wonderfully with this entire system and simulate the complete solar radiation or energy. This means that this system can simulate different sun positions, weather conditions, etc. With a click, we bring it to the screen and connect this device to our photovoltaic system. So we have the opportunity here to virtually create our own weather in the classroom. In order for the right energy consumption, we also have our wall box here. 
This means that this complex interplay of smart building and smart energies is implemented very easily and interestingly in this wonderful modular system. The question which rises, everything is well prepared here, looks great, and we can delve deeply into the technology. But what about the practical side when it really comes to wiring? For that, we have developed something new as well. This stand here is essentially a two-face. We can work on two sides here. But let's start on this side first. What we see here is initially our starting point, the house connection box. That means here comes from the ground or from the supplier, our electrical energy. But what happens next? After that, the trainees are now tasked with setting up the entire building. This means we have our circuit box here and all these elements that we see here, all the fuses must be placed before and then all these sockets can be put into operation. With a simple key switch, we can then switch from off to on. And then this system is essentially activated. That means first, the trainee wires everything by hand and later, together with the trainees, it is checked whether everything was done correctly here. Now the question arises, what do we find on the other side? Let's take another look in here first. This means that behind this plastic cover are exactly all these elements where the trainee is now required to correctly place the cables. Selecting the correct connections here and properly connecting the plugs from the other side. And let's see what that looks like now. That means from the other side. With all these different connections, we end up here at the top. And these plugs, all of this must now be correctly connected by the trainee so that we can then connect all the elements together here again. And here are the familiar ones again, our inverter. And also our weather maker device, which emulates the sun or rather the solar radiation. The overall topic is exactly the same, but here clearly with a focus on hands-on wiring. AI is not only important in measurement and control technology, but also in automation technology. Welcome to the AI era of Industry 4.0. What do we have here? Here we are at the very end of the production line. This is essentially about quality control. And here we have an optical AI-based quality control. So what can we learn with this system? Here again, we have our AI control unit and our setup with the camera. Various objects move into the camera's view here, and the AI now evaluates whether this object is assembled correctly as originally ordered, or if a mistake was made in the production process. If everything is okay, the product is released. If there is an error, the product is sent back into the production process. How all this works, we also learn here again in our LIA course with the corresponding project. In this case, the replacement of a conveyor belt system. The system is now prepared, and here we have our black sheep. We see the black block here. This is now essentially coming out of the production process. I will initiate the process now. And here we see the AI recognizes this object as faulty. Why? Because it is conditioned to red. This means it only allows red objects to pass through the production process. Since this is black, it is rejected and sent back into the production process. Now we take our red object, insert it and send it on its way again. And now we see on the screen that the red is recognized as correct and thus released from the production process. Let's now move on to the world of drive technology and here specifically to the topic of extended reality. Here, everything revolves around the concept of the digital twin. The colleagues have set up two systems here, all of which operate on a project basis. Let's take a closer look at this digital twin or rather this animation, which is directly linked to the electric motor. This means we now have our recycling plant here. We can empty the plant through these various options here, supply recycling material, determine the amount of recycling material supplied, as well as the mass, meaning how heavy the whole thing is. All of this has direct effects. On our electric motor, this means that if we now significantly increase the mass, we hear how the power, the torque on the electric motor increases more and more, and the mass becomes too high for it, causing the electric motor to fail. 
Now I have emptied the plant again. Now the electric motor is running again because it is able to handle the empty conveyor belt without any problems. We can now look at more detailed information here. This means we can now see the belt torque, motor voltage, motor current, electrical power and motor speed. And as mentioned, if we now change the ingoing material again, for example, that is, increase the amount of material supplied, we can see what effects this has on the various values. And we can also hear it very clearly, acoustically, by the behavior of the electric motor. We have a similar project over here. Here too, we again have the opportunity to directly link the digital world with the real world. Here, for example, using the example of a parcel sorting system, let's just start the system now. We now see how it works here in reality. And of course, we can just as easily rely on the digital world here. We can apply this idea with ease to a variety of projects. We remember the parcel sorting system project, the recycling plant project, but it can just as well be used for a silo control project. That means in agriculture, how a complete silo operation works. This too can be fully implemented with this system as well as many other projects.